hey and welcome back to another video in this video we're gonna be showing the widget some love and updating its appearance so with that let's get into this i've already done some of the other widgets in this video i'm showing you how to do it using the garage widget open up the garage widget the process will pretty much be the same for everyone we're just going to move some things around and change the appearances so it will just be replicating the process for every widget. first we're going to be adding in a custom font what i did was i created a new folder for the fonts in the content folder and then here's the font so to get a font into unreal you can download one either from the the fonts or from google fonts and then once you've downloaded the file you can unzip it to get fonts into unreal you're gonna need to import them not the usual way where you right click and then click on import or the same way you would if you were importing a us file where you simply just move it into the folder and then open unreal and then it will be there for a font you would need to go to where you downloaded the font in my case it's in a downloads folder. I download the K2D font. This is just for demonstration as I already have the font that I'm actually gonna use. This is downloaded from Google Fonts. And then you simply just take one of these. I'll take the extra bold and then you drag and drop it in Unreal. And then what you'll get is this message says font face import option. So if you don't get this pop-up, you probably dragged in the wrong file and then you say yes. And then it will create two font files for you over here. And then you simply save all. And then that's pretty much it. So once you go to your widget and you click on this, click on the text block over here. And then once you go over here by appearance font, and then it will be in here. This is the K2D extra bold font. As you can see, it has been added. So that's how you import fonts into Unreal. I'm going to be using this font over here, which is the same one I use for the thumbnails. So I'm keeping everything consistent for the tutorial series. So with that, let's change up the appearance. So we're just going to move some things around. And then let's go. That will be it for that text block so now we're going to move into the buttons which are which is the actual focus for the video here we're going to move the uh horizontal box a little bit to make it look a little bit better so these are all values that i've played around with before so i pretty much have a style that I'm going for. And then we're gonna move on to the buttons. So for the buttons, you're gonna need to add some padding because we're gonna add an effect to each button where it slightly scales up when you hover over the button. So we're gonna add some padding between each button so that when you hover over each button, it doesn't overlap with the buttons next to it. So here by the padding for the ones on the extreme right and left, you're gonna add it's okay with the raised buttons on the left so we would add a padding of 20 and then to the right of it you add a padding of 10 and then for the upgrade button the middle button you're gonna add left 10 on the left 10 on the right and then for the paint you're gonna add 10 on the left and then 20 on the right this is just so that like i said um, when you hover over it the buttons don't overlap and then also while you're adding um, more on the extreme sides is that so when you hover over the button it doesn't go over or not too far over the sides of the display area so we're going to change this one we're going to undo the garage material we created before so we're going to round off the buttons edges as well make it look a little better as you can see it's kind of rounded already over there it's a little bit rounded that's because here under the appearance style the outline settings um just above this is draw as this rounded box there's none there's box which is sharp corners there's border there's image where you would add an image on top of it and then there is rounded box which is what we're gonna use i'm gonna round them by a radius of 30 on each corner i'm gonna change the outline to a little bit of a lighter color and then i'm gonna set the width to six and then as you can see it adds like a little border around here and then to make that a little bit more distinct we're gonna go over to the tint and then by the alpha we're gonna make it half its value and then we're gonna press ok so now that is what the button currently looks like this is what every button is gonna look like 
by the end of this video and then over here by the hovered we're going to do the same remove the image uh, default the tint and then we're going to replicate the settings once more so that w whether it is um, just in its normal state, its hovered state or its press state, the button will look pretty much the same. I'm going to do the same for the outline. And then I'm going to add another work of six. Then we'll go down to the crest. Do that again. Add a radius of six. And then that will be everything. Then we're just gonna change the text block font for this. So you're just gonna, we're gonna justify to the middle, change the size to 30, and then change the font family to the font of your choice. Mine is this one over here. I don't know how to say the thing, but it's a really nice font. So that's that. And then for the purpose of the button scaling, we're gonna compile and then we're gonna go over to the graph and then to add the hover effect we're gonna take the button hold control drag it in and then on the button we're gonna go to the events on hovered and then also we're gonna check the unhovered uh you need to do this i tried to do this the different way where it's like unhovered and then i did something that says is hovered thinking that this is going to have the same effect and then you add like a branch and you scale it that way that does that doesn't work it doesn't work that way this is how it needs to be done if you do it that way it's just it's just going to upscale it and then not get it back down to normal so from the race button we're going to drag off and then look for scale and then look for set render scale down by the transform and then from the scale we're going to drag off and promote the variable I'm going to call this enlarge, enlarge scale, and then we're going to copy the set render scale, and then by scale again, I'm going to drag off, promote the variable, and then I'm just going to add the word normal in front of it, and then connect the execution pins, compile, so they can change the values on the variables. So we're not going to make it that big, it's like 1.05, 1.05, and then the normal scale will just be 1. And one so with that that is everything we need to do for the effect and then just gonna put a comment down and say change button scale that is the code you want to compile save go to the garage level hit play and then as you can see it has changed and as we hover over it it scales up and if you huh so there's something wrong so but to connect the race button to the Set render skill. My bad on that one. Okay. So now it should work. Uh, play. Okay. So there it scales up, scales down, scales up again, scales down. So that's that. Now I'm just going to do the same for the other two buttons. I'm, I'm, I'm done with the other two buttons for the widget, the race, the upgrade, and the paint. As you can see, I've already done the other ones too. So everything. So the garage widget obviously doesn't have a back button. I will leave all the um, measurements and everything for the back button on the screen. You can just pause and check all that out. Um, the measurements are only gonna work if the button itself is anchored to the middle. So what I mean by that is, uh, let's just go and open one of the widgets. Let's open up the face. So as you can see, the anchor point for this button is in the middle along with the measurements over here. So if it's not anchored to the center, then these measurements won't give you the same result because it's, it's the location is determined away from the anchor point itself. That's why it's in the negative over here. So if you change the anchor point, then the values over here also want to change. The size is not gonna change anyway it's just the position x and position y that's gonna need to change so you can get the same outcome if you're gonna use the metrics that i used to get this so yeah that's pretty much the end of the video and until the next one